Greetings and salutations, my fellow math enthusiasts and students of all things mathematical. My name is Sean Spartan, and this video will be about a topic in algebra called field theory. If you haven't watched my video on group theory, I highly recommend it, because some of the topics discussed in the video will be relevant here in this one. I will put a link in the description. One of the first persons to contribute to field theory was the mathematician Everest Galois, even though he died at the age of 20 from wounds he received in a duel, he did make significant contributions to the field of abstract algebra, so much so that the area of Galois theory was named after him. Okay, so first things first, as always, let's start by defining our terms. A field is a mathematical object consisting of a set of elements that I'll call F, and two binary field operations that I'll call addition and multiplication that satisfy certain properties. We call these properties the field axioms, and there are many, but first I'd like to talk about closure. Closure is an important property every field must have. If I take any two elements of F, say A and B, and I add them together, then their sum is also an F. Likewise, if I multiply them together, then their product also lies in F. The remaining axioms are associativity, commutativity, distributivity, identity, and invertibility. And I talked about some of these axioms in my group theory video. Associativity means if you have more than one sum or product to compute, the order you do the operation is irrelevant. Now, commutativity means rearranging the terms does not affect sums or products. Distributivity means multiplication distributes over addition, so multiplying an element by a sum is equal to the sum of the products. Identity means there is an additive and multiplicative identity, usually called 0 and 1, but not always. And finally, invertibility means every element has an additive inverse, and every non-zero element has a multiplicative inverse. And I go into some of these in more detail in my group theory video. Now you may notice that a field is just a special type of group with extra structure added onto it. In fact, fields can be described in terms of groups or rings, which are also essentially groups with added structure. I'd like to introduce the X notation here where FX represents a set without the additive identity. For example, QX is the set of rational numbers minus zero, and RX is the set of real numbers minus zero. In the context of group theory, a field F is a set with two group operations defined, such that F plus forms an abelian or commutative additive group, and FX times forms an abelian or commutative multiplicative group in which multiplication distributes over addition. If F has these properties, we say that F is a field. If F have all of these properties except multiplication is not commutative, then we say that F is a skew field. So some examples of fields. Um, the rational numbers Q, which are numbers that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers, uh, the real numbers R, the complex numbers C, which are numbers of the form A plus BI, where A and B are reals and I is the square root of negative one, all form fields under the usual addition and multiplication of numbers. The quaternions, however, which I will denote H for Hamilton, do not form a field, they form a skew field, so this multiplication is not commutative. Quaternions are numbers of the form A plus BI plus CJ plus DK, where A, B, C, and D are real, and multiplication of I, J, and K are defined by the following table. You can see the multiplication in H is not commutative, since, for example, I times J is K, but J times I is negative K. The quaternions are a four-dimensional extension of the real numbers that have many applications in areas like computer programming and physics. Now, all of the fields I have shown so far are infinite, but finite fields do exist. And before I talk about them, I need to introduce the topic of modular arithmetic. 
Modular arithmetic is sometimes referred to as clock arithmetic because whenever we convert the 24-hour clock to p.m., we are actually doing arithmetic modulo 12. If I want to know what time 1400 hours is equivalent to, I could subtract 12 and I'll get 2 p.m., or I could divide 14 by 12 and get a remainder of 2. We say that the number 2 is equivalent to 14, modulo 12. This is actually the definition we will use. So we say A plus B, or A times B, is equivalent to C modulo N, where C is an integer between 0 and N minus 1 inclusive, and C is the remainder you get when you divide the sum A plus B by N. Now if N divides A plus B, then C would be 0. For example, 3 plus 5 is 8, which is equivalent to 0 modulo 4, since 8 is a multiple of 4. Or equivalently, if I keep subtracting 4 from 8 until I get a number between 0 and 3, I'll end up with 0. I'll give you another example. 5 times 7 is 35, which is equivalent to 5 modulo 10, since 10 divides 35 with a remainder of 5. Or equivalently, if I keep subtracting 10s from 35 until I get a number between 0 and 9, I'll end up with 5. So there's a couple different ways that you could think about this. Now we can discuss some finite fields, or Galois fields. This is a multiplication table for Z7. Notice that as you go down each row, that each row contains exactly one number one, which is highlighted. This means that every non-zero element has a multiplicative inverse. This is not true for Zn for every choice of n. So let's look at another example. This is a multiplication table for Z10. Notice that there are no ones in the rows belonging to integers that are, share common factors with 10. In other words, there are only multiplicative inverses for the numbers that are relatively prime to 10. This is true for any choice we make. Therefore, for Zn to be a field, n must not have any factors in common with the numbers between 0 and n minus 1. This means that n must be a prime number. Recall from our previous example, Z7 is a field and 7 is a prime number. Now there are some finite fields whose order is not prime, it's actually a power of a prime, but I'm not talking about those right now. I'm talking about Zn. And Zn is a field under addition and multiplication modulo n, if and only if n is a prime number. That's about all I have time for in this video. Uh, field theory and cabal theory is a rich area of study, and I've only just scratched the surface here. A future video will center on field extensions and embedding ultimately leading up to the surreal numbers, which I've wanted to talk about for a long time. If you're interested in reading more about this topic, I highly recommend the book Field and Galois Theory by Dr. Patrick Morandi. I'll put a link in the description. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment.